I'm looking at something by the Beatles, of course, another great tune from George Harrison. And uh, just as a note, sometime last year, I think it was, I did a uh, lesson for George's guitar solo in something from the Abbey Road album. So I'll put a link to that in the uh, description box below so you can check that out if you want to. But in this particular lesson, I'm just covering the song, the chord progression, which is uh, really quite nice. It's got an A section with a set of chords and a B section with a set of chords. So right out the gate, what we hear on the intro of this recording is, of course, the infamous line. <laughs> and the chords underneath that are F major to E flat to G. And then we lock into C for the uh, first verse of the song. Now, as a quick note, I'm playing that E flat in a kind of big pianistic way. By all means, if that's too difficult to play, you can just play a conventional E flat uh, bar chord, okay? But in any event, the three chords on the intro are F, E flat, and G. So we have a standard C chord to a C major 7, removing the uh, first finger from the B string, and then a C7 or a C dominant 7th. Put the index finger back on where it was and add the pinky to the 3rd fret on the G string. And then finally we go to an F again. And you know, you just want to keep this loose and kind of stringy sounding if you know what I mean but basically you can adhere to this strumming pattern if you want okay so I'm kinda of just playing a down 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 up down up down down just three downstrokes on the F chord. But of course, you can mix it up however you want to do it. Feel free to do that. The more you mix it up, the better. Uh, once we hit the F chord, like I said, it's basically three downstrokes. And you hear that line, that descending little two note pattern on the recording, right? Into the D7 chord. But if you're playing it on solo guitar by yourself, it's nice to sort of arpeggiate the chord a little bit. And uh, I'm doing it while I'm inside the chord, but to break it down to what I'm actually playing, it's 3rd fret D string, 2nd fret G string, and 1st fret B string. And I think down, down, up, a little cross picking is good there. And then using the same three strings, it's 2nd fret on the D string, open G string, and 1st fret on the B string. And like I was saying, if you can capture that while you're still inside the F chord, it gives it a little extra sustain, right? To a D7 chord for a full strum like what we've been doing. And this is essentially a G chord, sort of mock G chord, if you want to call it that. 
but with my ring finger I am uh, fretting the third fret on the sixth string and lay your finger a little lazily across the string so that you mute out the A string and then swing down all the way to the B string. Don't hit the E string, the first E string. And then using the D string, the G string, and the B string, I'm playing the first fret on the B string and the second fret on the G string, including the open A string, or excuse me, the open D string in that. And then move that up a whole step to three and four. And you can kind of fill that out rhythmically however you want to. You can even slide it, which sounds kind of nice. Okay, so what we have so far is this. And then we move to the next part, which starts out with an A minor chord. And I'm basically just doing solid downstrokes for this part. We move from an A minor chord, four solid downstrokes, or semi solid, however you want to do it. And this is an E augmented chord, essentially with an A in the bass. That's certainly a uh, fine way to look at it. First fret, B string, first fret, G string, and then second fret, D string. Include your open A string in that and all the way down to the first E string. Uh, the next chord is an A minor 7th which can be achieved by simply lifting off your first finger. But if that feels kind of awkward for whatever reason you can just switch your fingers up like so. So instead of playing it like that, you can play it like that. One more time with the other fingering. And that is a D9, 5th fret A string, 4th fret D string, and then 5th fret for the G and the B string. And you want to be sure to play just those strings in the right hand. see that I went right back to the three chords on the intro F E flat and G and then we land a C chord and we're going to go through all of that stuff again Now a quick note on this, another way to play this section right here, if you're playing with another guitar player or maybe you just prefer it, you hear that real staccato uh, way that they present it on the recording along with the guitar and the piano and everything else. And you really hear that distinct chromatic line happening. So a nice way to play that is like so. So 
So what I'm doing right there, I'll just explain that to you. I'm barring across the first four strings, even though we're not actually playing the first E string, you just bar across it anyway. And uh, at the fifth fret, so I've got the E string, the B string, the G string, and the D string all barred. With my ring finger, I'm playing the seventh fret on the D string, and then we're gonna drop that note chromatically while we hang on to the chord. Drop it to the sixth fret. 5th fret, and then 4th fret. And like I say, that's kind of nice if you're playing with another guitar player. You can play those very staccato. And so, as you could probably see, what happens when you get through the second verse, you get to the tail end of it with the F, the E flat, and the G, instead of going to C and engaging with another verse, I went to an A chord, which you can play any way you'd like, and that leads us into the B section, if you will, of the song. And that A chord gets a full strum. Just like what we were using on the verses. Let's talk about that whole section and uh, how I approached it. So you'll see this uh, B section of the song played a few different ways and um, they're all valid, absolutely. Uh, but what I try to do with this is capture, you know, kind of bring together what you're hearing on the recording and you definitely hear this line descending. <laughs> And actually in the string section that George Martin worked out for this bit, you'll hear. Which I actually played the second time around. So that's really nice to play it like that because it really sounds um, a bit more like the recording, if you will. So I'm forming an A major triad, five, six, seven, across the B, the G, and the uh, D string, and I'm including the open A string and the first E string open. And that's like an A minor shape all the way up here, which makes an A major seventh chord, actually. So we have... And then I'm playing fourth fret on the D string, 6th fret on the G string, and 5th fret on the B string. And again, it's the same strings, open A string, open 1st string on the bottom. And that creates an A major 6th, but it really captures that, that descending line that you hear. So that right there is essentially an A chord, of course, but I wrote it down A slash E because we're emphasizing the uh, E note. And you can just play a regular A chord right there if you want, but I like the way that sounds. So that way, again, we capture that line. And that is obviously just a D major chord to a G. And then you hear that chromatic line. And you can certainly play it just like that on the sixth string, five, four, three, two, one, open. And 
and so on. But what I like to do again is I like to bring in a bit of that A chord and arpeggiate it, which is kind of nice again if you're playing it on guitar by yourself. And you can see on the tab exactly what's happening there. But I'm attempting to hold on to an A chord. And I think down, down, up is the best way to go with that. Fourth fret on the top string, and you'll need to skip a string for this one. Third fret, second fret, and then. So that's kind of nice if you want to add that in there. So the second time around, instead of the chromatic line, uh, the line is and you can just play that if you want to. Totally fine, right back to a C chord and a verse, but again I like to add a little bit of that C chord in there, which again you can see on the tab. takes you right into the guitar solo which is played over the whole thing again so everything just repeats it becomes a giant loop and I think that sounds kind of sweet for that section it kind of brings it to life on solo guitar if you will And at the end of the song, when you finally return to the F major, E flat, G, and so on, you're going to play that twice, okay? And the first time you're going to land the A chord at the end, and the second time you're going to land a C chord at the end to close out the song. There you go, something, uh, another great tune by George Harrison and uh, from the Beatles Abbey Road album, of course. And again, if you want to check out the uh, solo, uh, that's an old video, but uh, it takes you right through uh, everything that George plays on the solo. Thanks.